So this is our lesson on coronary heart disease. And these are the things that the syllabus says you need to know. Uh, you should already have opened the coronary heart disease document that's on Classroom. If I just show you what I'm talking about there, if I go up here. We have the coronary heart disease Google Doc on the classroom for you. Uh, there's a link to the register there as well, although there is a register link uh, also on classroom. Uh, this should be basically what you see. Uh, so if we go back in here then, you've got within that document, you've got some questions to answer I've answered one of the questions for you because the answer doesn't come up in uh, the presentation, but the rest of the questions you need to be able to answer and the answers come up through this presentation. So you should have registered, you should have uh, the presentation uh, open and uh, this video will guide you through that presentation. Uh, you'll be pausing the video in places to, uh, to do some work. So. You need, by the end of this, to be able to evaluate, not just state, but evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of treating cardiovascular disease by drugs or mechanical devices or transplant. So uh, the first thing, of course, we have to know is what coronary heart disease actually is. And so what happens with coronary heart disease is that fatty material builds up inside the coronary arteries that narrows them. As a consequence of that narrowing, the blood flow is reduced. That then means less oxygen gets to the heart muscle. So uh, that can lead to heart muscle dying or just not being able to do its job properly, getting really tired because it, it, it's not getting enough oxygen or glucose. So one of the ways of dealing with that is a thing called a stent. We'll talk about this a little bit more uh, through the presentation, but basically the stent is a thing that holds the coronary artery open, stops it narrowing. And uh, I've got something to say about smart materials there when we get to it. Another treatment is statins. Uh, what these do is to reduce blood cholesterol levels. That in turn means that you're getting less fatty deposit uh, on the artery and so the narrowing is slowed down. Sometimes we have faulty valves either because the valve uh, isn't opening properly or it isn't closing properly but either way uh, if the valve isn't working properly in the heart then the blood flow isn't right and that can lead to all kinds of problems uh, for the heart and for the the person generally. Uh, so Valves can be replaced either with biological valves, often uh, using pig valves, or mechanical valves. Uh, of course, using uh, parts of animals or even parts of humans uh, raises some uh, religious uh, ideological objections. Uh, we'll come to that a little later on. And it is possible to uh, transplant, replace the heart, sometimes the heart and lungs. Uh, if you have a, a need to replace your lungs, the heart is replaced at the same time, whereas you could just have a heart transplant. Uh, sometimes artificial hearts are used. They're generally, uh, they have been used as a temporary measure to keep the patient alive while they're waiting for a, a, an organic heart transplant or to allow the heart to rest. But increasingly now, uh, artificial hearts are becoming mainstream in the sense that they can be a replacement to uh, a permanent replacement to the uh, the organic heart. We're not quite there yet, but we're moving in that direction. So um, these are the things we're pitching for: the problems associated with heart disease, how they're treated. We've talked a bit about that already. Uh, the function of pacemaker cells, we haven't talked about that yet, but we're going to in a little bit. Uh, what an artificial heart is and why the valves might need replacing. Well, I've just mentioned that to you, but uh, you need to make notes on that. 
and then looking at the religious and ethical issues around uh, these treatments. Now here you have about 20 minutes work or a little bit more uh, if we include the, the answers. You have an exam question. It should take you about 10 minutes to do that. So you're going to click on this link in your presentation spend 10 minutes or thereabouts on the exam question. Once you've done it and you're happy, you've given it your best shot, look at the mark scheme. A couple of things to say, I'm not going to go through this with you now, uh, but because you have the answers, but a couple of things to say about the mark scheme. One, if a word is in brackets, the word is not required in order to get the marks. If the word is underlined, it must be there to get the marks. And of course, the mark scheme will give you alternatives. You don't have to have them all. If it's a one mark question, one of those alternatives separated by the oblique uh, will be enough. Then you have the circulation loop game. That's uh, a series of words and statements which you need to match. So which word on the right is the vessel that carries oxygenated blood? and uh, the blood vessels that carry blood towards the heart are they find the word on this side that matches with that so five minutes or thereabouts it's up to you really how long it takes give it your best shot and i will give you the answers so 10 minutes on the exam question approximately five minutes to mark it approximately five minutes to do this matching of words. Now, of course, if you're going to copy and paste statements or words around, it's going to take you more than five minutes. So I'm saying that you look and see what you think the answers are. Maybe write them down rather than trying to rearrange this formally. And then uh, I will give you the answers. So you should pause the video now for about 20 minutes overall doing the exam question, the Mars game and the loop game, uh, and then uh, come back and see the answers. So having done that, the loop game answers are here. What I have done is to uh, move them over so that they read more sensibly. So the sign of a heart that carries oxygenated blood is the left side. The blood vessels that carry blood towards the heart are the veins. Blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart are the arteries. Deoxygenated blood is carried to the lungs because that's where the oxygen gets added to the, the blood. The side of the heart that carries deoxygenated blood is the right side. In the lungs, the substance that moves from the air to the blood is oxygen. Of course, it's the gas, really. There's not just... Uh, gases that move, but nevertheless, oxygen is the gas that moves from the air uh, into the blood. And carbon dioxide is moving the other way. Oxygen is required in cells for the process of respiration, and the other things along with carbon dioxide that are produced are the waste products. Uh, blood vessels that form a net around the cells are the capillaries. They're very, very thin, and the idea of that is to allow rapid diffusion uh, across the, uh, the cells or through the cells. The vein that returns blood to the heart from the lungs is the pulmonary vein. And the unique feature of that vein is that it carries oxygenated blood. Uh, veins generally carry deoxygenated blood, but this one carries oxygenated blood. The top chamber of the heart, they're the atria, and the bottom chambers are the ventricles. The blood vessel that leaves the right ventricle towards the lungs is the pulmonary artery. And the unique feature of that is it carries deoxygenated blood. So you have one vein in the body that carries uh, oxygenated blood, and you have one artery that carries deoxygenated blood. Uh, arteries that carry blood away from the heart will do that at high pressure, whereas, uh, or sorry, the artery that carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle is the aorta, and the vein that returns blood from the body to the heart is the vena cava. So there you have your answers to the loop game. So 
Moving on then with our presentation. Why do we care? Well, heart disease is the, uh, the biggest killer of all the diseases in the UK. Uh, and almost half of heart disease is coronary heart disease that we're talking about today. This affects the coronary arteries and they supply the heart muscle with glucose and oxygen. So clearly if they are blocked or partially blocked, the supply of glucose and oxygen is reduced. And so uh, the heart muscle is unable to respire uh, as much as it needs to. And that leads to problems, uh, including the death of heart muscle. So, you're familiar with the structure of the heart. Uh, and we talked about, uh, in the syllabus extract at the start, we talked about the, uh, the pacemaker. This is the heart's natural pacemaker. It's called the sinoatrial node. This is the atrioventricular node. They are connected, but this is the heart's pacemaker. This coordinates the contraction of heart muscle. The special thing about heart muscle is that all heart muscle cells are myogenic. Uh, you'll see this word just off my screen, I'm sorry about that, uh, but in your presentation you'll see the challenge keyword myogenic. What that means is that these cells are contracting on their own. They don't need nervous impulse. You know, if you want to bend your arm, there has to be uh, an impulse along the nervous system to, to make the muscle contract. That's not the case with heart muscle. It contracts independently. But the problem with uh, the heart muscle contracting independently is you have all these muscle cells that are independently, randomly contracting. This is where the sinoatrial node comes in. This coordinates those contractions. So rather than having uh, the heart sort of uh, vibrating, fluttering, what it does is to get the muscles to contract at the same time. So the heart beats. So that's what the sinoatrial node does. It connects uh, to the, uh, the atrial ventricular node that then connects to these bundles of hiss and causes the heart to contract as one. So if that doesn't work for some reason, if that's not doing its job, then you get uh, fibrillation of the heart and uh, you need a pacemaker to artificially generate that uh, coordination of the heart muscle contraction. So that's what your pacemaker is your artificial pacemaker. This is your natural pacemaker. So I'm not going to spend very much time on this, but if you have time, uh, you can fill in uh, when stents, pacemakers, artificial hearts, valve replacements should be used, briefly how they are, uh, how they work. Problems, I mean, for example, with valve replacement, you do have uh, the, the risk of uh, complications with the, uh, the operation and you have the religious or ethical objections to the use of uh, pig valves or uh, uh, in the, uh, the operation. So here you have uh, a great quiz. Uh, it's similar to uh, the the starter activity and that it asks you in detail about uh, the, the different parts of the heart. Now you've studied the heart already, that was our last lesson. So you should know the anatomy of the heart. And just while I'm here, let me point out to you that this side of the heart, the left hand side, which pumps the blood around the body, this is more muscular than the left hand side that's pumping blood uh, to the lungs. So. Uh, just a, a quick reminder on that. So you have uh, drop down menus here to choose the right answer for one to nine. You have drop down menus to fill in words here. Once you've done all that, 
and you're happy with it, you can click on finished and you'll get ticks in these boxes if you're right. So if you're wrong, you can go back and change them. So do that. That should take you possibly 10 minutes. So open it up, pause the video, open it up, do that, and then come back and we'll look at the answers. So looking at the answers then, I'll just find those for you. So here we go. So one is blood from the body, two is the right atrium, three valves, four right ventricle, five left ventricle, six left atrium, seven blood from the lungs, eight blood to the body, nine blood to the lungs. So uh, you might be confused about left and right here. They are left and right according to the person whose heart it is. So we are looking through the person's chest at this point from the front. And so this is the right hand side of their heart. If you imagine standing behind this picture, this is on your right and this is on your left. So that's why it's, it's reversed. So the heart is made of muscle and has four chambers, two on each side. The left side contains oxygenated blood and the right side contains deoxygenated blood. The two atria are smaller and less muscular upper chambers. The two ventricles are larger, more muscular lower chambers. The left ventricle is more muscular than the right since it has to pump blood around the whole body. Deoxygenated blood from the body enters the right atrium which then contracts. This forces blood into the right ventricle, which then contracts. This forces blood out of the heart into the artery leading to the lungs. Oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the left atrium, which then contracts. This forces blood into the left ventricle, which then contracts. This forces blood out of the heart into the artery leading into the body. Arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Arteries have thicker walls and smaller lumen than veins. They also have no valves and contain more elastic and muscle fibers. All arteries carry oxygenated blood except for the ones to the lungs. Capillaries are microscopic and only one cell thick. They have no valves and link arteries to veins. So those are your answers there. So talking about stents and out of interest artificial blood products this is just out of interest really you don't particularly need to know about this stuff but it's interesting to know so stents then the The idea of the stent is that it forces the narrowed artery open. So you can see that this device is being introduced into the artery. So they're having to perform some surgery here. And if you could make your stent small, and then when it gets in there, it becomes big, that would be very helpful. And this is where smart materials come in. If you have a smart material, which when it gets to the temperature of blood normally, it expands, but at room temperature, it is small, then you can make a small incision, a small hole, put your stent in, and then when the stent warms up, it expands. So that reduces the impact of the surgery. But in any surgery, you have uh, problems with bleeding and infection potentially. Uh, and so 
Uh, surgery uh, is something that we try to avoid if we can. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, the arteries might reclose anyway, the stent might fail, and you might have to replace it. That happens. And uh, you have to take drugs which uh, stop the blood clotting during surgery. Uh, but stents are quite a, a simple device and they work very well. So uh, looking at the risks and benefits of stents, we, we've talked about that a little bit. Uh, and finally then we have our uh, plenary exercise where you match the statements and the terms. Again, the, the, the answer is on the next slide. So do this, pause the video, do it, and then uh, take a look at the answers on the next slide. So there you have your answers. And that brings us to the end of our video. Uh, if I just remind you of the things that you should have done here. Um, just looking for the document. So, what causes coronary heart disease? What blood vessels does it affect? Why does this cause a problem? So this is a buildup of fatty deposits. It's the coronary arteries. A narrowing of the artery as a consequence of the deposits reduces the blood flow, reduces the flow of oxygen and glucose to uh, the heart muscle. The stent is a device which holds the artery open, uh, preventing it closing, preventing the narrowing having that effect. Uh, and how does it help? Well, because it holds it open, it maintains the blood flow. What do statins cause? Well, the statins reduce the uh, buildup of cholesterol in the blood, and as a consequence, they slow down the buildup of fatty deposits in the coronary arteries. And the final question I answered for you, uh, I mentioned it during the, the presentation, but uh, it isn't actually in the presentation. If your valves aren't working properly, if they aren't closing properly or they're not opening properly, then your blood isn't flowing properly. And that is uh, a problem for the entire body. Blood isn't getting around the body as it ought to.